This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. What is up, Chiefs team, and welcome into this week's edition of Outside the Trenches here, presented by our friends at Five Farms Irish Cream Liqueur. Hanging out with Nick Lecky. We're doing a special edition of the show. We're not live. We appreciate you guys sticking with us, regardless of the change of plans. Look, short week, holiday thrown in the middle of a short week for the Chiefs. Got to move some stuff around. Look, Nick, you know, we're we're easygoing guys. We're pretty simple. We we move around really easy. So that's what, that's what happens. We just gotta we just gotta roll with the punches. That's what we do. You and I just roll with the punches. Exactly. Pliable like Gumby. Right? It's exactly you that's you gotta be. You gotta be. You got especially in this world too. Right? There's there's no such thing as a schedule, there's no whatever. It's like sure we try to do it live, not nine a.m. nine PM Wednesdays, but you know, it happens. It happens. You know, you just gotta roll with the punches. Just like what the Chiefs are not doing. Oh, the Chiefs are definitely not rolling with the punches. Um, they are not. They look so out of sorts, Nick. Uh, let's just start with the Chiefs because I think that obviously, you know, I think that's a that's a huge story just around the NFL is is the Chiefs' downfall on the offensive side of the ball. You know, we're used to seeing a, a Chiefs offense with Patrick Mahomes, with uh, Andy Reid, and some offensive masterminds. You look at some of the play charts and some of Mahomes' passing charts, he's got 18 passes at or behind the line of scrimmage. It's just, it's 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 absurd. Hey, he's looked like prime Alex Smith, the check down king, you know, and it's like, that's not his game. But I think, honestly, um, if we get into it, what we have is we have uh, a wealthy family in their third generation. So we have kids who have never worked, who have never seen their parents work or their grandparents work thinking this shit is just going to come happen. And they're like, it's just going to happen. And guess what? It ain't happening. It's like when you, when you travel back in time and you go, oh, here's how we fix it. And you're like, remember the Harry Potter one? The yellow yeah. night? And it's like, oh, wait, no, you got to fix it. Like You got to be the one. You can't just travel back in time and it's going to happen. You got to make it happen. And no one's making it happen. And I love Rashi Rice. I'm here in Dallas broadcast right now. North Dallas is literally five miles away where Rashi Rice went to college at SMU. And he looks like eighth generational wealth where he ain't fighting for balls in the end zone. And it's like, buddy, Tyreek Hill, what made Tyreek Hill good? It's because give him a Costco sweater, right? Because he got that dog in him. Yeah. And he does. He, he still shows he's got that dog uh, in Miami. And they, they, they've they uh, had a pretty big game this last week to kind of, uh, you know, you're down in Dallas. We'll talk a little bit about the the boys and everything. Look, we've got our our usual segment where we try to Florida State somebody, the college football playoff rankings and everything. But you know, Nick and I had to start with the Chiefs because it, it's one of the things where I think a lot of Kansas City, Nick, for lack of a better term, feels a little shell shocked when you just like watch this team. And I almost think that that they feel a little shell shocked too when you look at them on the sidelines. There's a couple times that they've panned to the sidelines where Travis Kelsey will just have like a blank stare on his face, the thousand yard stare. The just like, what is happening right now? Like this is something that they're just so not used to. And I think your analogy to kind of like third generational wealth, it, it makes sense because it's just like I'm not sure that like what I'm seeing. Like I don't. I think I'm. I've always. I'm been a little shell shocked by like how I've seen this offense progress. You usually want to see it progress obviously instead of regress but there's been some regression this year when it comes to this Chiefs offense there's been no flow right it's like you don't realize how hard it is to put together a 9 to 12 play drive where you have to make these connections and everybody on the offense has to do their part has to make a big reception you gotta have a go to you gotta have clutch and what teams are doing and it's basic and I know I'm not giving the people what they want in some advanced analysis but if Mahomes doesn't hit that Travis Kelsey, it's no good. And also, honestly, too, another thing, when you talk about third generational wealth, kids, Mahomes is your patriarch. He's the uh, he's the old guy who says F off in succession, right? Uh, I, forget, yeah. I forget his name, uh, but he's the guy. He started it all, right? It starts with Mahomes, Andy Reid, and Mahomes is running like he's worth half a billion dollars in the fact that he's not. And you saw him make a couple plays in that game, with his feet, and he needs more of that. Listen, it's late December. It's almost New Year's, right? This is playoff time, buddy. Now, 
don't be saving yourself for the future. You got that long bread. Now it's time to sell out. Now it's time to be a dog. Now it's time to, to, to use your legs, not hang out 20 yards deep in the pocket, put, put pressure on your crappy tackles, you know, trust your interiors. Right. Oh, yeah. The hunt takes the name. No, I, I love it because it's one of those things where, uh, you're, you're seeing this, this version of this chief's team that is, it's a very frustrating brand of football to watch. It's probably just like what every other football fan feels like, right? Yeah. As, as Chiefs fans, we've been so spoiled with the, with this offense and everything of just like, oh, it'll just it'll just click and everything will be fire and everything will be like that. But this that's not that's not football usually. Like that, we're so spoiled as Chiefs fans, right? And that's the thing, we're spoiled, right? We're third generational wealthy. We're at the third generational wealth. We're we're peak villain, right? Taylor Swift oh. is on our side. Now we we've had multiple Super Bowls. We're contending for a championship. So we expect greatness, and these players are like, "Oh, it'll just happen." Even me, like as the next player, I'm like, "Oh, they're turning on," and guess what? They're not turning shit on. And you know what's funny? They miss the enemy because no one's there to kick their ass. There's nobody there to be like, "Hey, get this shit right." And it feels like everyone's just coddled. Everyone's like, "Hey, you guys are good. We'll, we'll turn this on." It's not happening. It is not, and, and they should be turning it on. They should be turning it on, but they're not. They have they have to win their next two to win the division. Uh, so they've got the Bengals coming into town this week. A Bengals team that has, I th- I think it's statistically the worst defense in the National Football League, which is kind of surprising from a Lou and Rumo group. Where look, Lou and Rumo has kind of uh, messed with Mahomes a couple times every time they've uh, they've played. So. It's going to be an interesting test. Say, did Jake Browning and the boys come to Arrowhead? Now, Arrowhead hasn't quite been the home field advantage that we've come to learn it to be. Uh, it's been a little testy when it comes to the Chiefs' record at home. I believe if they lose this game, they'll have a losing record at home uh, for the year, which I couldn't tell you the last time that that's happened. I'll go back and look. Uh, but they have the Chargers as well. Uh, Nick, I, I guess I should ask you, do you think they win one of the next two? There's been such a regression with divisional opponents getting their comeuppance with these rich kids sitting on third base that it's like, honestly, you went from having one of the cake, most cake schedules to finish out your season to the most down and out wounded animals backed up in a corner, throwing the whole playbook at you. Everyone's getting fired. And it's like, damn, that's that. Those are scary. Like you went from like having this like easy non-conference schedule to like shit, this is meat of your division, and they're hungry, and they see you're weak, and you're not, you're not like you've been exposed, and you're not correcting those those issues that that have been exposed. And if you got a decent pass rush, which I suppose are hurt, is Khalil Mack hurt? Right? Yeah. yeah. Then I'm I'm afraid if they play the Chargers, and they're playing the Chargers. I mean, look, if they play the Chargers, they're playing the Chargers. They played the Chargers the once already. Week 18 will be the Chargers. <laughs> And, and that that's gonna be so that that'll be the last week of the season if it if it ends up mattering right because like if the Chiefs win this week and the Dolphins also win week eighteen uh won't matter like I I I think like if they win if they lose it doesn't matter so that's a conversation to be had too is like if they if they win and the Dolphins win this next week do you just hard reset and be like all right starters you sit just we've got to figure something out. Uh, just go ahead, sit, rest. Let's get it back and, and get back on track for, uh, you know, the first week of the playoffs, the wild card round, which will be the first time we're playing in the wild card round and what seems like ever. Yeah, it, it does. And it's like, okay, you get a home game, but then after that, if you win, which might not happen, right? You're going to have to go on the road again. So you're right. I mean, it's like, ugh, it's going to be a tough one, but we've talked about this. Miami is playing at Baltimore and then burst Buffalo. Yeah. That's, I, and honestly, that's equally as hard as the Chiefs' next two games versus Cincy, who is, you don't know what you're going to get, and then Chargers. Like, you have no clue what you're going to get from those teams. So, But, I mean, if you're Miami, that's a test. Because, spoiler alert, Baltimore has figured shit out like they always do. Like, what we thought the Chiefs were going to do, Baltimore's yeah. done that. Baltimore has streamlined and they're looking like we want this AFC. 
So Nick, let's get into it. Then. Let's let's put on our committee hats. Let's let's adjourn. Let's start the meeting. Uh, let's let's start our committee meeting up down in, in Grapevine at the uh, the Gaylord. The Gaylord. I know you never want to say it. <laughs> I never want to say it. Uh, it's the Gaylord, the Gaylord Texan, and down in, on Grapevine Lake, big beautiful Grapevine Lake. You know, spend many youth days out there getting drunk and on the water. So perfect. It is perfect for this to happen at this at this moment in time. Looking at our ratings last week, we had the Niners at number one. They suffered, obviously, that loss to the uh, Ravens, who were our number two team in our uh, playoff rankings, with the Eagles and the Dolphins coming in at number three and number four, respectively. So those were our top four teams when we ranked them like college football. Remember, we we ranked them. Remember, I had we, you should have noted I had the asterisks because we ranked them. San Francisco had the most wins, but I told you San Francisco is a, a complete team. Remember the picture of the horse that's beautifully drawn from the hindquarters and with a shit looking head. Mm-hmm. I got That's the Niners. That is the Niners with Brock Purdy at quarterback. It's a great. It's a great. Uh, little meme to use on a lot of things but uh if you if you're new here if you don't know what we're doing uh, i came up with this idea it was a few weeks ago to rank the nfl teams like the college football playoff committee ranks the you know college football playoff teams and <laughs> it is then eventually uh, divulged into okay now we're going to do this every week and we are going to florida state a team every week to where you just uh, find a reason to keep one team out of the four slot. Uh, again, last week we had the Niners, the Ravens, the Eagles, the Dolphins, with the Lions and the Chiefs were our five and our six. Um, our five and our six last week did not change uh, from the previous week. I believe that our five and our six are going to change this week. As we look at it now, uh, the Ravens have the most wins. I think it's fair for us to put the Ravens at number one, Nick. Solid, solid. The, the Ravens have have figured it out. Uh, the way so who did Baltimore they they beat down the Niners in Baltimore, right? I think so. Baltimore, or they, did, did I they think that was I think it was in San Francisco. Let me look at the schedule here. Yeah, it's in San Francisco. Yeah, why is my my computer being wonky? Sorry. Um, okay, so they went to San Francisco. So they flew. So they did the tricky one where you fly cross country. And, and they're three hours behind, and then they still won on the road in, in Levi Stadium, in Dirty Denim, Button Fly Stadium. <laughs> and not only did they win, they, they might have put the Da Vinci Code on Brock Purdy on how to defend. And it just, the, 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 I'm telling you, Baltimore has, they are scary. They are one with, uh, with a bullet. They are so good defensively. Who they have? They have Jadevon Clowney. I tweeted the other night. The Ravens always are always able to extend a couple of years out of these these DNs, edge rushers who are past their prime, but they'll come through big body and be able to show up when you need them. And it's, it's amazing. amazing. It is amazing. It's beautiful. Four interceptions from Brock Purdy in that game. Uh, so not a great performance from Brock Purdy. Kind of put the rest a little bit of the Brock Purdy uh, for MVP narrative. Kind of ignited the Lamar Jackson MVP narrative, which, look, he's had a really good year. I wouldn't be shocked if he wins it. I wouldn't take offense if he wins it either. Uh, I think the Ravens look as look really good. They're getting hot at the right time. That's what you need. They have the most wins in the NFL right now. I think they they deserve to be the number one overall seed. But when we start to look at who could be that number two seed, you're looking at that there's four 11-win teams. Uh, yeah. The Dolphins, the Niners, the Eagles, the Lions. Uh, Niners are, are, I mean, still a good football team, right? The Niners are still a good football oh, team. Yeah. I don't think they get Georgia in this circumstance, right? I don't <laughs> think they fall all the way to six uh, in terms of our rankings. Uh, I think they might. They're, they're, I think they'll fall maybe. Uh, well, here, this is a question that I think that we should talk about here, Nick. Do you still think the Niners are better than uh, the Eagles, the Dolphins, and the Lions? No. Okay. No. I, I think that the Niners are better than Detroit, but not better than Philly. 
Did you better the yeah, cousins? Um. Yes, because Dolphins have so many O linemen injured. So for a true Florida State to speculate, they're not at full strength, right? That they're going to get bumped down because of injuries, then we'd have to bump down the Dolphins. Although I like McDaniel's, I like Tua, I like Tyreek, I love this Miami Miami defense that they're clicking, that they're rejuvenated. Um, they they've lost too many on that offensive line, and. Miami still listen. Listen, we could put we could put Miami up there with the expectation that they still got to go play at Baltimore, you know, and then that that'll That's sort true. itself out. That'll sort itself out, and then they got to go to Pittsburgh. You don't know what Pittsburgh going to look like, but they're always dangerous. Producer Nick makes a really good point in the chat here. Uh, if we're also doing this by true playoff playoff committee, right? You got to take the head to head into it. Niners did beat Philly. So the Niners, then, uh, they do have the head-to-head -head over Philadelphia. Well, who are we to say that these regular season games don't matter? We're not going to be out here uh, putting – we're not going to be the team. We're not going to be the, the committee that puts Alabama over Texas when they beat them in the regular season. No, that's not going to be us. We're going to put Texas in over Alabama. Like, that's that's what we're going to do. So I do, I do like your rationale, though, of putting the Dolphins at two. Yeah. Because they will play the Ravens again. And, and, and I shouldn't say again. They will play them again this year. Go and on. then they're going to play them. And, uh, well, this week they're going to play them. Yeah. Those two teams will meet. The two teams that have only clinched a spot in the playoffs in the AFC, by the way, are going to play each other this week. But um, I, th I think I like Dolphins at two and then Niners at three. Do you think that's a good spot there with just ahead of the Eagles just because of the head-to-head? -head? San Francisco beat the brakes off Philly with the head to head. I don't think they did. Did they? Uh, let me look up that score real quick. I I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I don't did. think it was close. Uh, let's see. Here. 42 to 19. Yeah, no, they did beat the brakes off of them. They beat the brakes off them. In Philly? Was it in Philly or was it in San Francisco? It looks like it was in Philly. <laughs> so, yeah. When you you go into their house and you beat them, and this is when they were like red hot, and they were like, "Let's outlaw the freaking uh, Jalen Hurts push." Blah blah blah. Yeah, no. Okay, you're right. All right, so it's Baltimore, Miami, mm -hmm. San Francisco, and then Philly. Yeah, because because I, I like Philly. Philly versus Detroit. Philly versus Dallas. Philly. Yeah. Yep. And so then, those. Uh, the, okay. hey, that's solid. I love that. That's solid. What's that? What's your, what's your question? So are we going to keep the Lions at the five then? Yes. Okay. So we'll keep the Lions at the five, and we need a new number 16 because I don't think the Chiefs deserve to be at number six anymore. And on Odyssey, this is so easy for me. Like, this is seriously, this is easy because I've always liked the Browns. I thought they were a, a complete team. Yeah. Mm. And when you add uh, Mr. Elite, playoff, grab the bag when it's there for the taking, Joe Flacco does not get the bag and fumble it. He'll get the bag, flip it, and tumble it. And Joe Flacco at the head. And, and Joe Flacco's game is such old man game. Yeah, it suits this badass Cleveland for years has had you know fantastic offense alignment. And this suits them. And it suits the fact that their defense kicks ass. We've talked, we talked about this week one. You know, Cleveland in and if Miles Garris out, Nick Chubbs, I don't know who's out. But it's like that's a great defense. And now you have a quarterback who can who can hook you up. And my boy and Joku. Beast. Yep. Beast. I mean they're, they're a team right now that's sitting at the five seed. They've got a ten and five record. Uh same record as the as the uh, Dallas Cowboys. So they got the same record as those Cowboys who, look, Nick, last week you wrote them off. You said, nope, we're not, we are not talking about that team. Uh, and look, they went and they couldn't beat the Dolphins. They went and, and proved you're right. I'm, I'm telling you, listen, like, I, like it's, it, they, they did everything they did 
But like my man, Denny Green, RIP his soul, loved Big Boss Man, was my coach. He drafted me, loved him with all my heart. They are who we thought they were, for sure. Like 100%, for sure. Like it's like the Cowboys are the team where they look great. Everyone in Dallas is a ha-ha hype man, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, we expect to be disappointed right there. Mm. And that's Dallas for you. That's that's Dallas. I like putting the Browns here at six. I like Brown. That. Yeah. Because like I said, but the Sean Watson, they're still sus. But with Joe Flacco, man, this is this is who they need. Reason. Like I said earlier, right? And, and Joe Flacco, he's Mr. Playoffs. He's Mr. January. Mr. Yeah. February. He'll get it done. And he knows his role. Like he played with Ray Lewis in Baltimore. He knows to let the defense live. It's it's fan. and and he's got his Mark Andrews, right? He's got a joke. Yeah. Really is. It, it really is really close to that Super Bowl team that he had. I'm not I, I shouldn't I mean that that defense is really good. The Browns it's not that it's not that Ravens defense that he had, right? But like it's still a really good defense. But the way that his mentality is, that's a really good point. Of just like I'll just do what I do what I can. You know, I'm not going to do too much. Yeah, no, he's a veteran enough to be like he doesn't have that 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 little dick energy. He's cool. He, he's like he know he I know what to do. I got you. You don't take care of the football. That's what you need. I need a guy just to take care of the football and oh, not man. not put the team at disadvantage. And I think I'm going to bring this back to the Chiefs. Like the Chiefs have a really good defense, right? I don't think their defense creates enough takeaways for them to be carried like uh, like the Browns could carry an offense like Joe Flacco. Like, they create turnovers. I, I'll, I'll look up the numbers. I think the Chiefs are, like, 24th in turnovers created. You Like, you can't do that. The Chiefs have the worst turnover differential in the league. You can't not force turnovers and turn the ball over. Like, that's not going to work. Like, you can't you can't be in contention that way. Uh, if you got a quarterback like Joe Flacco, who is just going to take care of the ball and just do what he can. Like, they've got a good running game, too. Like, that's another thing is that they can keep the ball on the ground. Kareem Hunt's been running the ball well. They've got... Uh, Ford over there for them who's been running the ball well. Like they have that side of the things, and they have got that defense that is pretty salty. And they're a team, honestly. Like if I'm the Chiefs and I'm looking at like they're going to be a three, so they'll play who play six seed, right? Um, no, they'll oh so yeah, so they'll play like the six seed. And if the so say the Bills win and like the Browns you know is if somehow the Browns become the six seed and that's the first team the Chiefs have to play in the playoffs as a three seed matchup that's a bad matchup for the Chiefs like it's a like, bad match that's the team like I most don't want to see when I'm looking at yeah. this, like I think like I think that they can beat the Colts right like I think that they'll they can they can have a good day they can beat the Colts they'll wreak some havoc Gardner Minshew will make some play or will make some plays to kind of put the Chiefs in position to win that game, right? I think that we've seen the Chiefs hang in there with the Bills outside of shooting themselves in the foot. So you could you can talk your way into that one. The Browns, man, I that's a tough match. Oh. I don't trust it. Like uh like, you know, it's like I, I need a lot of five farms uh Irish cream liqueur to get through that game because it would be a beat down because those tackles couldn't handle it for the Chiefs, honestly. Yeah. I might need to go behind and give me some five farms I've converted. Nick got for Christmas. I got a cool Christmas gift right here. I don't know. What'd you get? Yeah. What'd you get? That's a oh. drink fridge. Yeah. The That's bev- a bevy fridge. The bevy fridge. I love oh, it. What you got in there? Stickers on it. Uh I got I'm gonna I got five farms in there. Uh okay. and, and it's great for the coffees, for the you know what actually it's really good in Nick. I don't know if you, you tried in hot chocolate. So you get some hot chocolate, put it in there, buddy. It's give that to my kids. Give that to my kids. Yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. I've got the uh, Five Farm sticker on there right there. This is a this is not great for the audio listeners, but I got the Five Farm <laughs> sticker on the uh, on the mini fridge right behind me. So anytime I'm just podcasting or editing or whatever, I can just slide on back there and get me a drink. But uh, I think it's a good time. Take a break. We'll be back and we'll do some blind nil to wrap up this show. Uh, coming up next. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. I'm Tucker Franklin hanging out with Nick Leckie on this week's edition of Outside the Trenches presented by Five Farms. 
Irish cream liqueur, no big B with us today, sadly. I would have really loved his input on uh, some of our rankings when it comes to our... I've been calling them college football playoff rankings because that's the process, but they're not college football teams, so that's not really how that would work. I guess they're like NFL playoff rankings. No, it's it's who got Florida State in, and that, that's the title. Who got It's like, hey, you know who we Florida State this year? Kansas City. Yeah, I'll... Straight up. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. They don't deserve to be in that, even in the top six right now, the way they're playing. Yeah. Like you, you, do keep not. Expecting, you keep expecting this thing to turn on, and it's not happening for them. It's not. And guess what? We're going to doubt them. Hopefully, with the chip on the shoulder, they get this stuff together. But it's like, man, who's going to step up? And everyone's like pointing. What's the Spider-Man meme where there's three of them? They're all looking at each other, pointing at each other. Right. That's that's where the Chiefs are right now. They're a Spider-Man meme. Say, you do it. No, you do it. Yeah. To go to go back over our uh, rankings, which essentially just turn into power rankings, but no, don't don't. This is something new. Don't act, don't act like this has been done before. Uh, number one, we have the. Actually, no. Let's work backwards. I like that. I'll be professional six. about it. Six. Number six, six, the Browns coming unranked the previous week up to number six, and e- easy shoe in, easy shoe in. Yeah, Joe Flacco's elite. This defense is elite. Running game's elite. O-line been good for about decades, so, yeah. The only other team really in a conversation for him was probably the Cowboys in, in that spot, and it wasn't really a conversation. So, the the Browns have been playing much better. Lions stay at number five. Lions has been at number five for, the, I think, the past three weeks. So Steady. Steady Eddie. They're, they're going to be there. When one of these teams slip up, they're going to be there, and they'll take advantage. Of yeah, spot. they'll be right there. And down one spot from last week to number four, the Philadelphia Eagles at number four, barely making our four-team playoff uh, that we have going on here. Down two spots from number one at number three this week, San Francisco 49ers suffering a tough loss to uh, the Baltimore Ravens. Up two spots this week to number two are the Miami Dolphins beating the Dallas Cowboys. Earns them two spots up in the poll. And number one, up one spot, are the Baltimore Ravens, who look mighty fine. Place a bet. They're going to go on a run. They might not lose again until two days before Valentine's Day. (laughs) Mark that one down. Mark that one down. Nick wants you to place a bet on the Ravens. Let me look up those DK odds here real quick. Uh, before we dive into some blind nils, because like there might be some pretty decent odds when you in, start to look in, at it in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, I mean, let me look. I'm pulling it up. NFC matches up well with that. Yeah, I mean, I think I I think they just beat the best team in the NFC. So, like, I, I think that that very well could have been a, a Super Bowl preview, like that game. Like, I think that those Easy. were, those those were, have been the two best teams in the league, I think, uh, going into that game. So, I, I, I mean, Lamar Jackson right now, minus 170 for MVP, by the way. Brock Purdy, plus 1,200. Wow. Not, not, hap- not happening. He got, he got stealth benched. He got stealth benched. Four interceptions, no TDs, hey. a neck strain. That's a stealth benching. The 49ers are the odds-on favorite right now to win the Super Bowl at plus 225. The Baltimore Ravens second at plus 350. So I still value. I still like, uh, honestly, like if I'm looking at these teams, you got to go with quarterback. And honestly... Cleveland might have what it takes to backdoor their way into this sucker. Hang on. Do you want to know those odds? Straight up and down. Straight up and down. Like, straight up and down. Like, it, it's like they're figuring shit out. Okay. So, it, for the Browns to win the Super Bowl, it's plus 4,500. Just to... Uh, I would give you... Uh, I got to pull up an odds calculator on this. I think it's like 45 to 1 or something like that. Um, is what that would be. But... Um, 
them to make the game is plus 1700 so i'll get an odds calculator out there uh to give you those and so that's seven okay so for 45 to 1 to win the super bowl 17 to 1 to make it to the super bowl so you're getting good value if you're if you're wanting to say hey i'll sprinkle a little bit on uh on this browns team to get hot or to get there to the Super Bowl to make it there, you're getting some pretty decent value. They got Amari Cooper, a wide receiver. Joe Flacco. And listen, here's the thing. When Deshaun Watson gets healthy, is he still around? Mm-hmm. Put, him in a, put him in a package like the Saints did with um, Homeboy, uh, who, who's the cat from BYU, the white guy quarterback. Jason Hill. Jason Hill. You match like think about that offense where you got Joe Flacco, you know, who is the pocket passer between this elite offensive line, and then you know, so he could be be dropping bombs to Njoku. They could run the shit out of the ball with Kareem Hunt and then Jerome Ford and Chubb. Right? You know, is Chubb out for the season? Chubb's out. He's not coming back this year. He's out for the season, but Kareem Hunt and Jerome Ford. And then sprinkle in Amari Cooper, who's a fantastic wide receiver, um, and Joku, who's a, a coming up clutch in December. And mm-hmm. then guess what? You sprinkle in some Deshaun, Deshaun Watson, Taysom Hill packages with this defense. I see them gears spinning in your head, Tucker. You, you're you're buying it. You're buying this shit. You're uh, like I'm buying it, right? You're thinking about it, right? Like I mean, who who could they they match up well versus everybody, and they play against in a tough conference. I mean, yeah. I, look, I think the I I think the Ravens have already won the won their uh, division, so like they're going to be a wild card team. I think that they can make some noise in there uh, when it comes when it comes to it. She's plus, she's plus still plus three fifty to win or to make it to the Super Bowl, which I think is is really interesting. Uh, looking at it, they're the, they have the third best odds in the AFC to make it to the Super Bowl. It uh, looks like, according to DraftKings Sportsbook, they think it's going to be Niners Ravens in the Super Bowl. So a game that we saw just last week. Lots of interesting things still to develop uh, from this last couple of weeks. Two weeks still left in the season. A lot can happen in two weeks, as I mentioned. Yeah. If the Chiefs win one of the two, they win the AFC West. They'll have the playoff spot. If the Chiefs win this week and the Dolphins win this week, it won't matter. Week 18 won't matter, so the Chiefs can rest starters if they if they want to. They don't have to necessarily. But a win or a loss in Week 18 wouldn't really mean anything. It wouldn't help them in the the odds, and it also wouldn't hurt them in the seeding, the way that it goes. So uh, a win this week against the Bengals. Jake Browning and company come into town. They'll uh, they'll secure a playoff spot. They just need one to win one of the next two to clinch the division to win the division. Um, they can probably clinch a playoff spot with like a, a weird scenario where at that time of the season, right, where you're getting all of these weird scenarios coming out before the Sunday games about like this needs to happen with this here and then that and then this over here also needs to happen. And then if they lose, they can win uh, at the same time, which is just that doesn't make any sense. But Nick, let's get to blind nil. Let's do it. What do you got for me? When you were a kid, and I used to watch movies, right, with friends or whatever. You have like like friends over. Did you have what was that one movie that could define your childhood? Because you must have seen it a thousand times and haven't watched it since. Mm. I watched The Sandlot a lot as a kid. Like I watched that movie a ton, but I watched it like this summer. Okay. I, watch it. I mean, but. but- what was the one movie that had the highest like amount of like views for your year? Was it Sandlot? Sandlot is what, Space Jam. What made those movies so great to you? What sort of nostalgia does that bring Ooh. back in your in your life? Like if if you put on the Sandlot on DVD, I'm assuming because you're that young. It's VHS. VHS. It's oh VHS. wow. Okay. Yeah. So VHS. So so you're popping in that VHS Sandlot or Space Jam. Mm-hmm. What 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 smells are evoked? What foods are happening? You got your boy over. Um, you got your family. What what are you doing? What does that bring back? I can remember I had one of those TVs that had the VCR okay. built into the bottom of it. Right, TV VCR combo. Yep, it was it was a banger. 
Um, and I would always, I, I'd always pop it in there myself, right? You know, I get to put it in there. You get to, to see the rewind and everything of it because mm-hmm. I'd sometimes pop it in and be at the end. So then I got to rewind the whole thing. And I can remember like a lot of times just like laying like on my back with like feet up on like the dresser with the, with the TV up there and just watching it. And like, that's, that's one of the things that I, I remember is just like, I would, that's all I would do is just like rewatch that movie over and over. Uh, Sandlot was the one I would do it a lot with Space Jam as well. Both of those movies did it a whole bunch with, but I, I can remember like Kraft Mac and Cheese is also one of the things I was just like, oh yeah, that, that was, I, I love me some Kraft Mac and Cheese. I'd always watch it with that. And I would always fast forward through the E.T. commercial, uh, uh, a little, the preview because I was scared of it. Yeah, that's a creepy, it's a creepy animatronic thing E.T. was back in the day. So that's fully understandable. That's, I mean, those are the two movies that I wore out. Like those VH test tapes were, were worn by the time. Those gears where you had to rewind them were, oof. Last, last legs. Oh yeah. I feel you. Okay. So I guess then, do you know about Blockbuster Video? Oh Yeah. We we used to have a and it wasn't necessarily a it was a local store. or a mo- like local video store. Yeah, yeah. That we would go to. Uh, we would get um, a couple movies, usually usually for the fam. Would never get because I came from like a bigger family, right? So like it wasn't just like I could pick out something specific. It was like something the family had to agree on if we were gonna watch it all together. But yeah, dude, and like going in there, especially with like the video games on one side, I was like, I want to look at all these video games, and then like all these movies too. I can't imagine what it was like, like when, when, cause even when I was a kid, like it was at the tail end, obviously of like a blockbuster of a movie store. Like you could tell like, well, I don't know how long these are going to stay around. They didn't for that much longer, but um, no, they didn't. in the I day, mean, I, man, I honestly had a, a Netflix subscription in the late nineties where I was getting DVDs in the mail. Yeah. In the red, the red envelope for Netflix back in the days. So I, I was a pioneer, but to me, um, I remember like Friday night you'd have a friend sleep over. There was a Cox video, there was a Blockbuster video on opposite sides of like where we could go to from a house. And uh, if it was one via place, we would go get a Little Caesars, oh, yeah. like with the um, with the sliding. It was like two pizzas and crazy bread in the middle. And you and, and it wasn't in boxes. It was like a thing, like two people all like like a six foot long hero. <laughs> all right, it's like a coffin, like you have this coffin. And so we get that after we went to the video store, and I would get Rad, and Rad was a BMX flick. Um, mm. You know, started off uh, Hal Needham, who did uh, Smokey and the Bandit, directed it, and uh, Crew Jones. Mm. Uh, is this kind of battle versus this corporate um, Mark Taylor GT BMX racer and the Reynolds twins. And it, it combined, you know, high school, Cochrane, California, you know, this hell track is coming to town, uh, all these big riders, and he has to work his way up to local circuits to, to ride in this hell track. Mm. And and it was awesome. And spoiler alert, he wins, right? He's bootstrapped on the GoFundMe before the internet. And it was just a fantastic movie. It had had great, great music, uh, Break the Ice, um, music that you can dance to is a song. I mean, just some vibey, just a vibey, feel good story. And so Rad was that that video of my youth. Rad was awesome. BMX. I used I used to always play this is has to do with like on the same like BMX thing. It's called MX Unleashed, uh, a video game on the PS2. Uh, you could just like you just pick whatever you know, motocross, BMX, oh, yeah. like whatever you wanted to ride and just like ride around. I used to love that stuff. And then BMX was always that one of those things where I was like, when I was a kid riding my bike, I was just like, that's what I want to do. Like I want to ride BMX stuff. I want to build a ramp. Like I think every kid did that though. Like every kid was like, let me build a ramp and ramp my bike off of this and let's do it. And feel really sick doing the BMX stuff. Like that's always, yeah. that's always really cool. But then you watch BMX on YouTube and it's rhythm and timing and those guys are hustling. It's like a hundred yard sprint and you're just like going through. They're like, like those guys are smooth because they're like, like back wheel on all, all the doubles and triples and berms. Yeah, it's, and if you crash you out, yeah, it's a sprint. That's cool. 
it's one of those things too, like watching the X Games is when I realized I was like, Oh yeah, I'm never gonna be able to do that. It's like, yeah. These guys are really good at it and I can't I've got a hard time doing a bunny hop. You're telling me <laughs> uh, these guys are doing all this stuff. Which like the X Games, by the way, yeah. way ahead of their time. Like those were in, I that was like appointment television. One hundred percent. even back in the day before your time, Dan Cortez on MTV, it was called MTV Extreme or M- MTV Sports with Dan Cortez. It was like peak '90s shit, and it was like had all like the like the like the neon graphics, and it was like base jumping, extreme sports, right? All these extreme sports, and and it was Dan Cortez MTV Sports. It, it was awesome, and he did all that stuff, and it was cool to see. I gave a little preview, and just picture any YouTube video you've seen with the song "Sale" by AOL Nation. <laughs> that's what it was listen that is uh that is a good youtube uh a youtube song that brings me to a a question that i want to ask not as yet i guess it could i guess it could be my blind nil right um but i've been uh perusing the youtube lately and and i feel like there's youtube videos that everyone has seen right like a Especially in the sports realm of things, there's like sports YouTube videos that everyone has seen. One that sticks out to me is the Tavon Austin highlight video. Um, it feels like everyone has seen that one Tavon Austin highlight mixtape of him going nuts at West Virginia. And uh, it's got like millions of views, right? So like, obviously a lot of people have seen it. Is there one, like, sports YouTube video that sticks out to you? Like, when you think of just, like, watching a sports YouTube video with the boys, maybe a highlight package or uh, a video that was put together that just, like, uh, sticks out with you? Yeah, yeah, um, 100%. Like, it, it, you can just kind of, like, just jog your memory and whatever comes, whatever bubbles up first. Yeah. And it would have to be, um, I'm from Texas, and Texas high school highlights – and who was the white kid who was from Houston and played at Michigan and had the sickest, like the sickest high high school highlights ever? So I'm I'm trying to think. Um, oh, Michigan recruit Houston. quarterback? Nope, running back. Running back. And it was it was sick. Like I'm talking like like absolutely amazing. So it'd be be um hmm. what year was it? Uh two thousand early two thousand. Houston is what you said? Uh was it Karen Hickton? Nope. Oh, that'd have been that's late. Oh my gosh. Tim McGuffey. Yes. Shout out producer Nick in the chat for getting that for getting that one. Yes. Sam McGuffey. Um, so Sam McGuffey, I remember, and this is a time when I was very super impressionable. So it was like, I mean, it was like, I mean, you could I mean there's 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 been YouTubes on him, like what happened to him, the viral high school highlight video pioneer. But he was 5'10, 180. And he was hurdling people back in that day. Like, I'm like skipping over their backs. And he's playing on AstroTurf. And he's a white boy at running back in Houston. Mm. So it was like, like he went to Houston Sci Fair and, and he put these boys on the map. He uh... really, like, it was, and he went to Michigan and then had it. And then, Never made, never did shit in in college. Like, he never, like, never did anything. He's had like, quite the career path, uh, according yeah. to his Wikipedia, is what I'm seeing. It looks like he's an American bobsledder for the U.S. men's national team. Uh, wow. He was a, as we know, a former running back. He also ended up playing wide receiver a little bit, and he was a rugby union player yeah. uh, as well. And he was most recently a member of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the CFL. He was with time with the Raiders in training camp in 2013. He was a pre-practice squad player for the Cardinals and the Patriots. 
Uh, he played at Michigan his freshman season, then he transferred to Rice to play his yep. final three years uh, at Houston, obviously. That's where Rice is. Uh, so he played in his backyard. Man, that is insane. Like, that is, like, what a career that is uh, yeah. to be a high school phenom sensation where he rushed for a total of 5,847 yards and 699 total carries and scored 83 touchdowns in high school. That's nuts. Um, with that first career and his junior season, he had 3,121 yards. Wait a second. That can't be right. His, his junior season, he carried the ball 358 times for 3,121 yards and scored 44 touchdowns. Yeah. Kid was legit. Ran a 4 three forty, according to uh, Nick in the chat. Yeah. yeah Lee. It was, the kid was, the, like I said, and I remember this was in 20, what year was that? He's in the NFL. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 2010. So Michigan, he was. So he went, probably been 2008, he was, he was, 29. He was Rich Rod uh, oh, yeah. in 08. So he graduated in 08. So freshman year of 08 and went to Rice. But like the 07, I remember 07, all my buddies back home were like, looking, this kid's legit. And it's like, what? And yeah, and it turns out he didn't do shit. Three concussions during his freshman season at Michigan. This Wikipedia page is wild. Like, there's... It's insane. Like, you, yeah. just, you just keep learning things about him. Uh, he also ran track at Rice. What? Yeah, the and, world? and Rice is a cool college because Rice is the Harvard of Texas. Rice is an engineering college. It, it's fantastic. And Rice Village of Houston is money it's a nice part of houston like a really nice part of houston rice village is, is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous never been to houston never been down there it's a good spot houston's fun it's massive yeah that's right here it's 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 huge yeah producer nick says rice is a nice campus He's but yeah i'd have to say that sam mcguffey mix up when I, that that's when he sticks on my memory like a like a sports highlight where even more so because me, I don't like to watch like the sports. I like to watch like snowboarding and and random sh random stuff on YouTube. But the Sam mm -hmm. Guthy was like back in the day, like that was like, whoa. Yeah, the Tavon Austin one for me is the one that that sticks out. He has legit highlights, but it's like you know he wasn't gonna make the NFL. He's just too small. He's so quick though, but it's like man, those guys can tackle the NFL. He was fun to watch at Old West Virginia. They were cooking something up there with old Tavon Austin. Uh, and see, there with Chino too, with twenty twelve. I, I think. Oh, so. yeah, I think that's when Tavon Austin was there. Um, that would make sense. Was that the year that maybe I'm? Were they in like in the national championship? Uh, the, so they're there, there in twenty twelve, and they lost to Baylor fifty five to sixty two. It was brutal. I was like, that's a brutal loss. That's another wild t Texas University we could talk about is Baylor. Mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Yeah, trust me. Stedman Bailey. I forgot about Stedman Bailey. Holy cow. They, what a they whole had they, had asked, they had some athletes at Baylor. Yeah. I did, so that, that that was, I guess we could use that as my blind no. I don't have anything else. Because like. Is, is that one, the table on Austin highlights? Yeah, the table on Austin I, I watched that video again the other day. And every time I see it. Uh, it's just like, yeah, like this is, this is what I'm like, oh, this is football. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Um, that this, this guy's playing a different game uh, than what I've seen. But, uh, Nick, any final thoughts to take us home? You know, I, I really like the, uh, who got Florida state section today. Um, mm -hmm. it, it felt fun. good. It felt good to Florida state, the chiefs, you know, just, I, I mean, it's not Florida state. They'd be out of the top six. It ain't even Florida state it. They don't sure. deserve to be Florida State, to be honest. So, did we really Florida State anybody today? I think the Lions continue to get Florida Stated. Yeah, but I just don't trust golf. I mean, just it's fair. Just don't. And it's like, man, when how they played versus the Packers on Thanksgiving. Yeah, that was tough. That was bad. so. So yeah.
We'll see. Next week, we'll be back at full strength, uh, reportedly. We'll reportedly be back at full strength with uh, Big B returning, and we'll get some uh, clarity on our rankings as we're going to have the Ravens and the Dolphins play each other. Some good matchups this week. chiefs Bengals, of course. Maybe not the same matchup that we would have anticipated at the beginning of the season and it being at Week 17, but nevertheless, uh, we'll be back after uh, another week of NFL action. Nick, hope you had a Merry Christmas. We didn't even talk about Christmas all that much, but I hope you had a Merry Christmas as you're down in Dallas celebrating right now. But that's going to do it for us at Outside the Trench. It's presented by our friends at Five Farms Ice Cream Liqueur. Check them out at Holiday Distillery. You got a bunch of great stuff at Holiday Distillery if you're looking at. Uh, they've got some Who Songs Tequila as well if you're into that type of thing. You can go check that out. But uh, Five Farms Irish Cream Liqueur, great for this time of the year. For Nick Lecky, I'm Tucker Franklin. We'll talk to you guys next week.